those of us who spent like 30 years in the gay rights movement, as it were, our core objective was to remind people a, a few things. And this is, this is what we kind of, we did in the, in the 80s and 90s, really. We said, we just want to be like you. We don't want to change your life in any way. Maybe you'll be a little uncomfortable because we're around, but, you know, can't help that. Um, we're not going to make you change your pronouns. We're not going to make you do anything different at your marriages. We're gonna, not going to, if we join the military, we're going to, you know, we're just going to be treated the same as everyone else. And all of this will be fine. And everyone was sort of cool after a while. You know, there was some initial hostility and panic and fear. And then it slowly, and now we have 70% support for those things. What we did was emphasize what we have in common with everyone else not what sets us apart. In other words, what we were doing was a universalist human experiment. What they're doing is a very particularist, identity-based uh, defense of it, which appeals to no one because it, it, it's not even asking anybody to agree or disagree. It's demanding. It's demanding obedience because, again, this comes down to philosophically. If you believe in power or if you believe in truth, they don't believe in truth. They don't believe there's any stable truth, let alone about biology or anything else. Um, so the only way they can do this is by the exercise of raw power, which is either just enforcing things and demanding it, like the American Medical Association is now doing, um, or demanding that you use certain pronouns or not, or smearing and targeting and demonizing anybody who speaks up against, not saying their arguments are wrong because this, this, and this, but spending God knows how much time and energy saying that someone like J.K. Rowling is somehow an evil human being when it's quite obvious to any sane person that she is not. But that's what they do because they don't have the muscles for argument. They do not actually want to stress what they have in common with everyone else. It is a kind of adolescent temper tantrum that has always been there within gay politics, within the queer movement, and which many of us in the 80s and 90s were like, if we carry on like this, we're not going to get even basic protections or even basic respect. And many of us who were not identifying that way, who were the last thing on earth I would call myself is queer, uh, uh, felt as if the movement didn't really exist. And we came in and the movement actually did shift and it did succeed. But then we succeeded and we left because our goal, as far as I'm concerned, once he got our basic rights, our job now is to get on with our fucking lives and actually <laughs> do something with them. And so this stuff is not obsessing. It's about going forward. It's not about obsessing about who you are. Um, and uh, so we quit. And then they get to define it all. And the trans people come in and the, the queer theory people come in who were always there but were kept somewhat at bay. And they just took over. And they've gotten rid of the entire older establishment of the gay rights organizations they are the most militant, they are the least democratic, they are the most authoritarian. And they are borderline violent and offensive. Their discourse, if you compare our arguments to marriage equality with their vicious insults, just the way they just say things like, fuck you, into people's faces in a demo. There are other ways of demonstrating, you know, than saying, fuck off, or I want you to suck my tranny dick. We didn't, we didn't say that when we were asking for the right to marry. It's not a great chat-up line, is it? It's, it's, it's also defeating, and it's, it's, it's done a lot to put back, along with this bullshit words that we have to use, like LGBTQIA+, and, and gender-affirming care, all this bullshit. And I think there are a lot of people who, who just feel like they've been, this has been imposed on them, and fuck you. And it's the word queer as well, and I'm, and I'm glad you brought it up, because... So a lot of my family are from Venezuela and I have, there's a saying in, in my, my, my family are called Los Palices and there's a saying in Los Palices that you're either ugly or you're gay, right? Those are the two choices. So I grew up with a lot of gay men who were closeted in Latin America and seeing what they had to go through. And now this, I actually find it, it actually pisses me off when people go, I'm queer and they just, it's just an identity. It's just something to play with. And I'm like, it's identity slumming. That's what I call it. it, it it's like, Sue, I'm so cool. I'm queer now. It's like I was some, some dude on Twitter a couple of years back, I think, who's just like this nice middle-aged guy with a nice wife and two kids and a little picture of him on Twitter and he's like some academic. And he just said this, I just decided today that I need on Twitter to come out as queer. I'm queer now. And I, and I just tweeted back, no, you're not. 
<laughs> if, but if you are, if that is, I mean, that's the point. The point of the, the left is to take queer and expand it beyond homosexual. Well, first of all, to co-opt every homosexual into it. Well, how fucking dare they suddenly decide that because they, they, they're a lobby group that controls the New York Times or the Washington Post and sends them guides to the words they use, that suddenly we have the word queer used in the New York Times ubiquitously as simply a neutral descriptor of gay people. Again, imposition, power, not persuasion anyway. And then they lie that this has happened spontaneously and organically. No, it hasn't. I mean, there's a bunch of Ivy League gays have suddenly decided to call themselves that. Uh, uh, so I don't think it's going to succeed. I think it's going to hurt, actually. And I think, I think, uh, and I think there's going to be even a lot of trans kids in red states and gay kids in blue states that are going to suffer from the fact we either have all or nothing in terms of treatment of, of children with gender dysphoria. For me, the one point I want to make is this on that question, is that if you tell a three or four-year-old boy who might be feeling, maybe I'm not like the other boys, I like this, I like playing Barbie, I like reading, I, like, I don't like playing rugby or whatever. If you tell them you can be a boy or a girl or both or neither or something else entirely, uh, and they're told that this is a choice for them, it is quite possible that a young gay boy will internalize that as the idea that I really should be a girl. And that breaks my heart. It breaks my heart. Because everything we tried to do, which was to tell gay boys, you do not have to deny your maleness to be gay. You don't have to renounce your sex to be gay. Uh, is being undone. And the stereotypical models and behaviors that are being fed into the minds of these children were what we fought against. Uh, and the impact on gay kids, people don't talk about, they always talk about trans kids, but many of them are not trans. Many of them are gay and confused. Um, and most, the vast majority of kids with gender dysphoria, we all know, resolve it in puberty and go on to be gay. The question for gay people is how many of us are being uh, siphoned off that path by well-meant but overly invasive engineering of these kids before they're really capable of making these proper decisions for themselves. This is about gay kids. That's why they insist on LGBTQI. That's why they, they take all these very different experiences and, 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 and identities and mash them all into this queer thing so they can prevent these tensions from being aired. Well, they will be aired. Um, but what's happened is that because of tribalism, the vast majority of gay men are going to shut up. They can't support DeSantis. They can't support these right-wingers. They can't support the Republicans. They can't support the religious right. Therefore, they're fine. 